Welcome to the Boating News Show. Coming up, we look at this week's news from the world of boating. We have yet another giveaway prize. Announce the winner of that awesome Scanstra giveaway from last week. And we check out the latest craft from one of the most established British rib brands out there. Firstly, a shout out to the awesome guys and girls at MDL Marinas, the UK's largest marine operator, who are not only doing a sterling job looking after our PBR flagship craft Horizon, but also sponsoring this show. We'll hear more about these guys later. For now, let's start this week's show. So this week in the world of boating news, we firstly want to talk about the French boat builder Beneteau. Beneteau's latest addition to their range of day boats is the Flyer 9. And if there were boat shows running this year, you'd have likely been greeted by this new model. The Flyer 9 embodies the spirit of the Beneteau day boat range. They seem to have taken the recipe from the previous generation, working hard to erase its flaws and optimise on its strengths. Staying true to that flyer DNA, the boat further optimises comfort and performance with a view to delivering total enjoyment on the water. Now, the new craft is available in two different configurations, either sun deck or space deck variations. Space on board the Flyer 9 Sun Deck version is cleverly optimised and the previous generation's level of comfort has been improved vastly. Boasting cutting edge instruments and extra comfort, the pleasure of driving this boat is all about having a good time together with your family and friends and looking at the boat's design and layout you can kind of see that this is designed to be a very sociable boat where you can obviously build lots of memories on board from bay to bay. Now there's a couple of areas in the design that I really like just looking at the footage. Firstly it strikes me that they've got quite a good wide port side gun allowing access uh, forward on that port side which gives you good access to that bow area and I love the opening side platform on the port side too. Beneteau call this their sea view terrace. I mean it's not like you couldn't see the sea with it shut but anyhow it's a great addition to a boat of this size and it opens up that aft section to be a really nice sociable large space superbly. For full details on both variants of the new flyer, the link will be in the description below. So check out uh, the Beneteau website for more information. Now, maybe you are considering your first boat purchase. And when everything returns to normality and we can travel easier, you are maybe planning boating abroad for the first time. Well, the next company has you covered. Boat rental company Click and Boat have acquired Nautil, their main European competitor. With acquisition of the Spanish firm, Click and Boat have reinforced their international leadership, especially in the UK, with more than 360 boats being listed on uh, for rental in the UK by Nautil. This offers great scope to be able to get started boating and uh, try things out maybe before you consider uh, purchasing your own craft. The Click and Boat Group now have 150 employees looking after your boating needs and connects a community of 1 million users around the world. Despite the current context, Click and Boat are consolidating the boat rental market and the takeover of Nautil comes just four months after yet another acquisition, that of the German company scan sale. So they're really making leaps and bounds in this industry. Click and Boat and Nautil share many values and the acquisition of Nautil will allow these guys to reach a critical size promoting an outstanding quality of service. The buyout promises to making boating accessible to as many people as possible. If this is something that you are interested in then head over to the link below. Continuing with the theme of ease of access to the water, a company that has specialised in this for many years is Ribshack. 
the Southampton-based firm who cut their teeth offering shared ownership and management schemes. They started out doing shared ownership on predominantly ribeyes. There you were able to save money by owning a share rather than owning the complete asset. The idea flew. Ribshack has expanded and now their brand offers quite a considerable fleet and options when looking to purchase a share of a craft. Following on from that success and the success of the addition of Axopar 28 cabins in their lineup last year, Ribshack Marine are now planning to bring their first Axopar 37 XE cross cabin to their shared boat ownership scheme for January 2021. With five 28s already in their fleet, Colin Vine, the director of Ribshack, have said that this is now taking things to a whole other level. Even dating back in his early uh, days with the ribeyes, Colin knows how to kit out a new boat with a great understanding of what his customers are after. All the Ribshack craft come fully specced and the Axopar 37 will be no different. This boat will be configured with twin Mercury 300 V8s, with a view to offering enhanced performance in all conditions. And that step up in that hull will enable loads of new people wanting to step into that larger craft to really further their boating experience. Ribshack will be offering demonstrations to interested parties, so contact them via their form on ribshackmarine.co.uk and I'll pop that link in the description below. Now, if you were hoping to hop across the pond to Miami Boat Show in February, it's with sadness that due to the ongoing global problems that it has now been cancelled. In a statement from the organisers this week, they said that the health and safety of everyone involved in producing, attending and exhibiting at their shows was of utmost importance. And following a thorough analysis of the local market and their safety first principles, that they decided to cancel this year's 2021 Progressive Insurance Miami International Boat Show, scheduled February 11th to 15th, 2021. I say this year's, it will obviously be next year, but the up and coming show, you know what I mean. It's an incredible show, and if you love boats and you can justify making the trip when they return to Miami Marine Stadium in 22, it's well worth a visit. The types of craft and hospitality at the show are phenomenal. Now, lastly, have you always fancied to go on a jet rib? Maybe you're looking at a new tender or a fun way to get on the water. Maybe a step up from a jet ski or something. Well, the guys at Sea Rific are offering a two hour in adventure ride uh, for two in their new to the UK Seacart 335. This is a jet rib that's powered by 110 a horsepower Yamaha engine and I drove it only a few weeks ago and it was good for a whopping 50 mile an hour. Video here is some of our drone footage from that day with my cameraman sidekick Aaron having a whale of a time on board. It's a free prize draw to win the ride on board and it's valid until the 30th of September next year. So to enter just follow the link in our description and then uh, you can get cracking and enter that awesome uh, prize draw. Seerific are a nice family business, passionate about boating, and I'm sure they will look after you greatly. Now, this week's talking topic is all about one of the most established rib brands in the UK. I'm not talking about Humber, we covered off on those guys last week. This week we are talking all things Cobra. A couple of weeks ago, I headed down to MDL's Hamble Point Marina to check out their latest Nautique 8.2. We thought we'd give you guys a walkthrough of this cool craft, so I'll roll the video now. This is our latest video of a fantastic brand which is one of the most established rib products in the country. It is the Cobra Nautique 8.2. This is the latest incarnation from the guys at Cobra and it's a British built product and you can really tell that quality throughout the whole of the boat. It features fantastic teak flooring by Ty Conway and his team at Hamble Point Marina. It has Hyperlon Orca tubes, Diamante Silvertex upholstery, a 350 horsepower Duroprop Suzuki outboard. You can mount that directly in the middle of the transom rather than offsetting that like as per a single traditional outboard rigging. It also has a Fusion uh, stereo system and a Garmin multifunctional display, deck lights, suspension seating. It's a really nice craft and it lives up to that Cobra brand. Starting aft on the Nautic 8.2, you're greeted with this lovely big U-shaped sofa, perfect for all the family to socialize. It's really nice quality upholstery. After you have a really nice bathing area um, with a 
um, ladder on your starboard side. The thick gauge of the A-frame shows real quality. The welding work is all superb. And then you go into their rear compartment. So this reveals not only a table, which we'll show in a second, but also all of the um, switches, etc., to turn on the batteries. This table is a really cool idea. So normally you'd have a socket within the deck that you have a pop-out table and you've got to build it up. They've thought, maybe akin to some of the super yacht tenders that Cobra also make, um, a really simple and intuitive design in their table. So it purely just sits on the little plinth, comes out, and then with a little bungee, you can fold the table out. So once you've got everybody sat around, you've got a really nice table that's the perfect size for the amount of capacity that you could have here on board. And then when you're done with the table, you simply fold it away, back into its socket. And within seconds, you're back into more of a high performance cruising setup. Within the molded helm station, you have three storage compartments. The first has got a phone storage with um, USB chargers, etc. The second is a duplicate of that molding, but without the electronic charging. And then down below, you've got, in this particular boat, some really decent storage. However, they can change this setup. And as we see on the 7.7, .7, our sister boat next to us is fully lined and with Dometic offers a refrigerated space for all of your drinks. So moving forward, we have the helm configuration for the Nautic 8.2, and these feature an integrated shock ram behind the two seats into the molding of this storage compartment, which allows you about an inch and a half of travel, and that's just enough to be able to take the, the loads out on those really bigger uh, waves that you may encounter in a boat like this, where you can go offshore more regularly. You have a nice foot plate below, um, which puts you into the seat. These are a, um, a flick out bolster. So when you are sitting, you've still got a really nice comfortable position. What's nice as well is that the handrail, etc., isn't is just below eye level. So it's not interfering with your line of vision, even in a, a, a seated um, environment. And then everything is just really neat and to hand. So your hand throttle, whether you're sitting or standing, everything is ergonomic and where it should be. Everything is of a, a real clear layout. So you've got your Garmin multifunctional display, and then you have your VHF and your Suzuki engine gauges and your switch panel, etc., where you need to be. Really nice, cool fusion uh, color speakers as well that are RGB con remote controlled. And you have a fusion uh, remote control here also on the throttle pod. What's really nice as well is the uh, engine switches, etc., are all tucked away neatly. But again, they're rigged in a position where it's not going to hit your knee um, or cause any interference while at the helm, even though they're on the helm uh, position. In the standing position, everything is still to hand and ergonomic. You can tell that they've got real experience in rigging boats and using these craft in more of an offshore environment. The time of use over that 32 year period really is evident. We're making sure everything is placed just so. As we move forward on the boat, you have a, a great load of storage in the console. This Nautique is available in various different configurations and one of the console designs allows for a heads. But this one has really great access to everything behind the fuses and it has a removable panel so that obviously you can get to all the um, electric gubbins if you needed to do something a little bit more severe. It's a really nice sort of suicide seat. It gives it a nice deep hugging either side with handrails. Quite often on a boat like this, uh, you'll find a sporty seat in the console, but then you've got nowhere really to hold on to. So it lives up to that suicide seat name. However, on this boat, you really feel that you're part of the craft. So for a family, for example, your uh, children, etc., are gonna feel really safe rather than maybe a sportier style rib that you kind of sometimes feel that you're sat on top of. You don't feel vulnerable at all, and even at higher cruising speeds, you'd feel quite comfortable in this seat. So, then moving forward, you have storage on port and starboard. And what's really nice is they've evolved the brand over the time and added in these fairings to the moldings to be able to keep them as dry as possible. 
and uh, just shows the sort of quality to detail. Really nice stainless steel fittings. Again, really decent upholstery. And a, as a boat that's completely made in the UK, this is really nice to see. It also has uh, an infill in here, which then you'd be able to make this into a sun pad. What's really nice with the Nautique 8.2 is that their bow cushion actually is part of the hatch. So it reveals a really nice, decent sized anchor locker, but it's all parts of one uh, lid which then actually is sandwiched into the sides of the tube. So this actually cannot then not come out while you're at speed. Rather than maybe having an, an anchor locker lid, having upholstery on the top, poppering it down, those poppers rusting, or you're thinking that you've got it into position, you're doing 40 knots and then you lose an expensive cushion over the side. So that's a really nice, a simple way of showing that the Cobra brands really know what they're doing on their rigging. So a big shout out to the guys at Cobra for building a superb new rib. One of the things I really like about Cobra is that on the surface, the DNA always stays true to their pedigree. However, quietly underneath, as each year passes, there's plenty of like little subtle changes and tweaks where their team are constantly refining that winning formula. And it shows as they've been in business now for well over 30 years. And even on the day that we did that test, they had uh, customers waiting to get out and get on board to place orders on an 8.2. They already had a seven meter craft from their stable. The full video of our test uh, will be out next week. So stay tuned on our YouTube channel where we'll put the boat through its paces and show you what it's like to be at the helm of the boat at over 50 knots. The full write up and review also will be in the next issue of PBR. So grab yourselves a copy or jump onto our free digital subscription. Now, last week we ran a giveaway prize to win a Scanstrut Rock Wireless Active, the world's first waterproof wireless charging phone mount. This prize is worth around 140 quid and it makes a great addition to your boat console. Maybe something that you wanna rig over winter while your boat's on its trailer or whatever, not boating. We had lots of entries for this one and it proved really popular. From the entries, our online uh, name generator bot picked Amanda Shepherd. Congratulations, Amanda. I see that you have entered a few times now <laughs> over the last few weeks. So your perseverance with our bot at commentpicker.com has paid off. To claim, please email us at social at powerboatandrib.com and we will introduce you to the guys at Scanstrut who will arrange shipping for you. If you haven't won, we're going to personally choose a runner up each week to receive a free printed subscription of the magazine, chosen on the basis of the best comment or something that makes the PBR team laugh when putting the entries into the online engine. This week, we can say congratulations to Richard Slater, who commented that he kept getting into trouble with his wife for not having his phone charged while on board his boat. It's a very dangerous thing to do. You should always have your phone charged for safety reasons. Well, you have no excuse now. We've introduced you to the Scanstrap brand. However, if you're banished to the garden shed or spare room or whatever in the doghouse, you can now wind away those hours with a copy of PBR for the next 12 months. So congratulations, I think. <laughs> if you haven't won, do not fear. Powerboat and Rib are doing yet another giveaway. Now, during lockdown, Paul Glatzel of Powerboat Training UK and I ran a series of educational live streams going through key points of boating. And, and this will be returning soon. I have a call with Paul this evening to go through our next plans on the next iteration of these episodes. Well, these were meant to help you if you are new to boating or brush up on a few key points. I even had a few useful reminders myself while preparing each episode. Within one of the shows, we talked about rough weather handling and before we got talking about the correct way to drive your boat through heavy weather, we taught wave theory, which helped you understand weather and how that impacted not only on your ability as a skipper, helming craft, but also passage planning too, and the different sea states and how this was caused and tides, etc. Well, Adlard Coles have published a new book, which will be great in your arsenal of reference material, helping you to be better prepared when going to sea. Now, this is called The Weather Handbook, 
And weather forecasts can often be frustrating because they're often too general and don't give sufficient local detail. You may be doing your passage planning and you need to know whether it's going to be raining where you are in two hours, not whether it's going to be raining within a 50 mile radius at some, some point in the next six hours. This essential guide to how weather is formed helps you to look at the sky and interpret the signs for yourself. Combining first-hand knowledge with information from professionals and helps you to kind of look at the most accurate predictions as a skipper and in your passage planning, maximize your enjoyment on the water. So we're gonna give away three books. So to enter, all you need to do is like this video, comment on why you should win one of these handbooks and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. For this one, because we have three of these, the top three comments will be the winners. So good luck and it'll be really good to brush up on this because it will really help you be a better skipper and have some more uh, insight before you hit the water. That's it for now. Thanks again for watching and see you again next week. And a massive thank you, as we said before, to MDL Marinas who have sponsored this show. When it comes to successful marine operations, MDL offers incredible experience and great expertise. Established in 1973, they are now the UK's leading marina and water-based leisure provider and one of Europe's largest marina groups, currently operating 20 major marinas and boatyards, which are home to over 7,000 berths. They have also added two idyllic holiday parks to their collection, providing the perfect getaway by the water. Find out more at mdlmarinas.co.uk.